ain't easy. Huh? Practice is not easy, especially in the beginning. Huh? Until we, we get to a point, you know, where, where it starts to become easier. Just don't stop, yeah? I mean, we can always do one photo, yeah? or one breath, whatever. Don't have to do the Buddha if you like the breath, you do the breath. If you don't, yeah, if, if the Buddha is more comfortable, do the Buddha. Mm. Both work. If you like, don't like the word Buddha, then take Dhamma or, or Sanko. Yeah? You can change them. Yeah? And sometimes we forget why, why we are here. Why are we here in a monastery? Huh? Yeah, why? <clears throat> Practice seems, a bit, seems to be difficult and everything seems to be better, but there was a reason for us to come here. Yeah? And we tend to forget that. One of the reasons was certainly was Dukkha. Yeah? We were dissatisfied with the life that we are leading, or uncomfortable, or, or life itself didn't bring us the satisfaction that we expected from it. But over the course, you know, over the course of our practice, we tend to forget the reason why we came here, or why, the reason why we are dead. <clears throat> and then there's no more motivation. To go and practice, ah, oh, it's boring, ah, oh, let me do something else, ah, oh, let me go back to the world, yeah? I mean, we came here from the world because it was Tukka, huh? Or well, sometimes we came, came for another reason. But we should ask ourselves, in order to, to boast, you know, to, or to boost, <clears throat> boost our motivation, we should ask ourselves, why were we born? Hmm? Why? What is the purpose of our life? I mean, do we have just this one life? Or do we, like most of the Asians, eh, believe, you know, that there's a life after this life, or there's rebirth? It's amazing, you know, that, that in the West, that most Western nations don't believe in rebirth. But most people, you know, in this world believe in rebirth. But, uh, people who are born in a Christian country, uh, there's no, there's, I mean, this, this is amazing, you know, you're thrown out into this world one time, <laughs> and some people are thrown out, you know, to be a king, other people are thrown out, you know, to, to live in a ghetto. Uh, what is this purpose eh? of this one life? Eh? What can we do? Eh? If you are born into a family of murders, murderers, if you are born into a family of soldiers, yeah, all what we can do, all what we learn is kill. Eh? <clears throat> or if you are born into a family of robbers, yeah. And all what we do is yeah, robbing, yeah, stealing. Uh, what is, why, why are we born here? You know, what is the purpose of our life? It's a good question we should ask ourselves, not only one time, yeah, more often. What am I doing? What am I doing? And then, what am I doing with my life? Am I fulfilling my goal that I have for this life? Or what is my goal? If we believe in, if we start to believe in rebirth, then what is the goal of this life? Which way do I want to walk? Do I want to walk, you know, in the in the cycle of birth and death? Just you know, closing my eyes, you know, and running like a hamster in a hamster wheel? Okay, that's fine with me. I'm just giving you some hints, yeah? 
to think about yeah, your own life, the purpose of your own life. Oh, I need to work, you know, I need to work to live, you know, I need to work, you know, to have a family, to have kids, you know. When the kids grow up, you know, then I grow old. <clears throat> and what do I have, yeah? When I, when I give up my spoon, yeah, in Germany we say, you know, giving up one spoon is, you know, meaning, you know, one is dying, yeah? <clears throat> And what do I have? What is left from the life I led? Was it fulfilling? Was it satisfying? And what can I take with me into the next life? I mean, each Buddhist should ask himself or herself, what, what am I going to take, can take in my next life? We know that the body dies, you know, and we have to leave our family behind, our houses, all our possessions, nothing of this sort, nothing of the material sort we can take with us. The only thing that we can take with us is pun and bab. That means, you know, good merit and demerit. All the good deeds that we did, we can take with us, and all the bad deeds that we did, we take with us. And depending on how many good deeds and bad deeds we have, that's what determines where are we going. Are we going down? Yeah, if, for instance, if we didn't keep the five precepts, we're going probably down to hell, like most of the other people. Just follow them on the highway <clears throat> to hell. Isn't there a movie, Highway to Hell? <laughs> I mean, you, it's so much fun, you know, on this Highway to Hell. We have so much fun, you know, we break all the precepts, you know, we take whatever we want, you know, if it is ours or not ours, yeah, this is the highway to hell, yeah. Whenever somebody is in our way, we kill him or get rid of him. Hmm? And that is very fast, yeah, driving with 180 miles an hour, yeah. And then in the end, yeah, and people, yeah? <clears throat> sometimes I had an imitator, yeah. I mean, I, I was walking the slowly path up the hill, you know, on a stony path, you know, and the people were rushing by in the, in the Mercedes or, or Bentleys or Chevrolets or whatever, you know, and uh, sitting there yeah, and laughing at me, you know, looking at me and saying, yeah, yeah, this is stupid, you know, we are racing, you know, on this highway. And he, he's so stupid, walking up the stony path, yeah, yeah. Huh? Sweating in the heat, you know, we have air conditioning in our cars, you know, and music and all this fun, yeah. But the moment I went up, you know, went up the hill, you know, I saw that this road goes nowhere, you know. It suddenly stops, you know, and all the people fall off, you know, into hell, yeah. <laughs> But they can't see it. Yeah? <clears throat> That was a nice nimitta. Yeah? I do the hard work, you know, and that's what we are doing when we are here in this monastery. We really, you know, it is not easy, this work that, that we are doing, <clears throat> going against the ingrained habits, going against, you know, the, the evil things that, that are buried in our chitta. That is, it's not an easy, it is not an easy work. Eh? Nobody says that. Nobody says that meditation practice is easy. Meditation practice is the, is the hardest work. And, and realize, you know, when, when you're here in the monastery, you will realize, and especially if you're a monk, you live day in, day out, you know, doing the same kind, kind of work. You wake up, you know, you, you recall your Buddha or you recall your <clears throat> investigation and then you stay on the day, you know, until you go, until you're tired and go to sleep. And then the next morning, and there's not, the next morning you do the same thing. When go up, you know, wake up with Buddha, you know, and then you go to sleep with Buddha. <clears throat> And there's, there's Monday, Tuesday, till Friday and Saturday and Sunday. There's no break, there's no holiday, there's no... Uh, nothing. It's every day the same thing, you know. <clears throat> so that is really tough. I mean, in the world, at least, you know, when we go to work, you know, some, some people, you know, have the Sundays off each week. You know? They work for five days, you know. If you are living in... In good countries like, like Sweden or Germany, you know, we, we end our work on Friday afternoon. Eh? <clears throat> And then we have, we have uh, until, until Monday morning, until we go back to work. 
<clears throat> in other countries, you know, we have to work on Saturday as well. <clears throat> but here, I mean, there's no rest. There's no holiday. Ah. For the monks, especially for the monks, yeah. Now you can go on holiday. <laughs> Four weeks paid vacation. <laughs> huh? Wouldn't it be nice, huh? Some of, them, some of my monks probably would think it would be nice, uh, just going, yeah, going to the beach, you know, and, and, and <laughs> having a rest. So it is, it is quite tough, yeah. <clears throat> and and my, my master, Venerable Lungta Mahaprabhu, said, you know, there's no harder work than the work of practice. Working in, working in the world, you know, it is relatively easy, even if, the, even if we have the toughest work of working in a diamond mine or in a coal mine or in a gold mine, under, underneath, you know, not seeing the light of the day, you know, coming, you know, going to the mine when it is dark, you know, leaving the mine when it is dark, you know, never see the day, the light of the day. You know. This is still much, much easier. And working, you know, working 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 hours on our practice. Calming the mind, first calming the mind, and then investigating all the things that are in the mind or in the chitta. Whatever, yeah, I mean, you see it. When, when, when you try and, and, and meditate, when you sit down, you know, on, on your meditation seat, <clears throat> And you try to do buddha, or you, you, you stay with the breath. All these things that are coming up, where do they come from? Yeah. They come from the chitta. So we have to, we have to analyze it, yeah? And chuck them out, one by one, one by one, until the chitta. Yeah? The first thing is we, we, do, we try not to pay interest to it. Some of it easily disappears. Yeah? If you don't pay interest to it, whatever comes up, you know, not interested, not interested, not interested, not interested, until the sticky things come, until the ingrained habits come that we have developed over the years, yeah, that what we call our characteristic tendencies, yeah? <clears throat> and then we can investigate this. Yeah? See, why, why, why do we do the things that we are doing? Just like I said for reflection. Why am I doing this? What is what what came before that I decided to do something? What is the result yeah, of my doing? Yeah. Investigating these things. Yeah. We think we constantly think about the future. Yeah. When we think about the future, the moment you caught yourself, what is the point of thinking about the future? Has the future and then then analyzing has the future that you painted all your life long, has it ever come true? Huh? Ask yourself. It's a play of the Kilesas that want to paint something that is nice because at the moment we, we don't feel so good. That's why we like to paint a future that, is, that seems to be nice. Huh? But it, ha it has never or hardly ever happened, this kind of future. Huh? Remember it. Try it. All these things that we think about, yeah? Some, some of the things we think, we have thought about it 1,000 times, hundred thousands of times, every time it's the same kind of thought. Why are we going still to do it, huh, Wendy? Huh? <laughs> we still need to do it. Why? What is the purpose of it? But we never ask ourselves. We just think that this thought is, that this thought is nice. That's why we think about it. As I said last time, I mean, with each thought or with each memory comes a certain kind of feeling. And we want to have this feeling. Why do we want to have this feeling? Because it's a nice feeling and at the moment we don't feel so nice. We don't feel so comfortable. That's why we think about this and think, think about that. Because at the moment, in our practice, you know, we st still have to fight with tiredness or we have to, t to fight with sloth and torpor or, or we have to fight with uh, restlessness or boredom. Boredom is not a, not a pleasant feeling. Restlessness is not a pleasant feeling. And that's 
And most of the time, I mean, you can probably say 99% of the time, we think or we do something because we don't feel comfortable at the moment. Because if you feel comfortable and you will realize it in samadhi, we don't want anything. We don't want to change. Hmm? The feeling of changing this, yeah? changing our house, changing our apartment, changing the curtains, changing our clothes, I mean, all comes from a discomfort. All comes from dukkha. Changing the menu. Yeah? Oh, let's go to that restaurant. Yeah? Let's go to that restaurant. Or eat this kind of food. Or eat that kind of food. They all come from discomfort. All comes from dukkha. Yeah? Being interested in something new. Why are we interested in something new? Because there's dukkha. Huh? Please. Realize it, investigate huh? why you do the things you are doing. Hmm? What, you, what is your expectation and does your expectation meet with the results of your doing, of your action, be it thoughts or be it, <clears throat> be it speech or be it, be it action. Huh? That makes us human. You remember a human person, huh? a human being, huh? homo sapiens, is a is a being, you know, that reflects about its own doing. Huh? And when did we do the last time? When did we reflect about our own actions? So how can we call ourselves human beings? Conscious of what one is doing, why one is this doing, and what are the results of it. That makes us a human being. But at the moment, yeah, we, are, we are not really, you know, human beings. We just walk the path, you know, because we walked it, you know, before, you know, last year I did this, so I do it this year, huh? the year before I did this, yeah, and we just walk, 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 close our eyes, yeah, and hope that nothing happens, huh? And then, then we encounter this hindrance or that hindrance, and then we wake up for a moment and think, what, what, what is wrong, what happened, you know, and then, huh? We solve the situation and then we go to sleep. That's what most of us as human beings do. We, we don't reflect. We are not, we are not really homo sapiens. Yeah? We are more like robots, you know, who follow our conditioning. Hmm? And that actually comes back, you know, to, to the Lord Buddha's teaching when he talked about Nibbana. He talked about Nibbana being the unconditioned. Hmm? And what is a condition? Well, whoever you know knows a little bit about programming knows if then else. Huh? That is conditioning. If I see this, I like it. If I see that, I don't like it. If I see my parents, I will react like that. If I see my friend, I will react like that. And we, are, and if you remember, and that's where you need your, where, where you need some reflection. If you remember, I mean, when you see this person, you act like that. When you see that person, you act like that. We always, we always take on different roads, just like Shakespeare said, yeah? taking on different roads. When we see our parents, we take on the role of the child. When we, when we see, our, uh, see our friend, you know, we take on that role. When we are in school, you know, we take on that, that role, yeah, and so on. How many roads have you played in your life? Yeah? But we don't notice it. And that's why the Lord Buddha told us, Open your eyes, yeah, because he knew that our eyes are deeply closed. We don't see what we are doing. Hmm? We're just conditioned, yeah? yeah. The only thing, you know, when we wake up is if our condition is not working to our satisfaction. Then we open our eyes and say, well, what the hell happened just now? Sometimes, you know, we wake up you know, from our sleep. Once, once in a while, maybe every five years or every ten years, you say, well, what am I doing here? Huh? But then instantly we close our eyes and say, ah, oh, it's all good. Yeah? Huh? <laughs> we don't want to think. I mean, we want to think about all these things, you know, about the future, about the past, you know, what we are going to do, you know, who we are going to become, yeah? What are we going to do when we have a million dollars, you know, in our pocket, yeah? That's what we like to think. Yeah? But we don't want to think about, you know, what are we doing here in this life? Yeah? 
that, that is much more useful. What is the purpose of my life? Huh? What do I want to take with at the end of my life? What, what can I gather with and take with me? Yeah? And as I said, you know, there are only two things we can take with us. It is Bun and Bab, yeah? or merit and demerit, good deeds and bad deeds. That's what we take, or the results of the good deeds and the bad deeds, that's what we take with us in our next life, and that determines our next life. Understand that? It's enough for today. <coughs> so, do you have any questions? Don't waste your life. I don't kill the time with this, all these things, yeah? I mean, the people who still live in the world, you know, how, how, how many hours do you kill with playing on your smartphone? Huh? It's a waste of time. It's killing time. Huh? It's a night. I, I love this expression. We kill time. We have so much time, we can't wait that we die. Huh? That is mean, that's the meaning of killing time. Yeah? In most of our conversations that we have with other people, is nothing else than killing time. Huh? We don't do anything useful, we just, we just waste the time yeah? by watching this or watching that, you know, by doing this or doing that, by talking about this or talking about that. It's killing time. We must have so much time on hand, yeah, that, that yeah? we don't know what to do. Actually, you know, most of the time, we, what we could do is, when we are still in the life, when we wait for the bus, we do butto, yeah? When we cycle on our bicycle, you know, we do butto, 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 yeah? I mean, it goes very well with the cycling, yeah? <coughs> when we ride the bus, bus, you know, or when we ride the airplane, we, we don't look at these magazines, you know, with all this filth, yeah? We do butto, 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 yeah? Whenever we have time and nothing is really at hand to do, yeah, we do put on. Or oh, observing the breath, going in, going out. And then, sooner or later, we will realize, I mean, that all the things that we, that we have done so far, most of them are, are really wasting time or killing the time. Do we have so much time on hand? We don't know when we are going to die. So, it can be tomorrow. It can be in 10 years, it can be in 50 years. Yeah? So don't kill the time. Don't waste it. Use every moment that you have. Because as long as you have the breath going, you can do breath, observing the breath or do a Buddha meditation. The moment the breath is gone, that's what we call death. Yeah? Or where you have given up the, the spoon you know, that feeds you. Yeah? I, I, like, I love this German expression. Giving up the spoon. <laughs> Den Löffel aus der Hand leben. Huh? You remember that? No. You, no. Uh, Amit, you remember that? You heard that expression before? No. Uh, or, or, hear, or hearing the uh, hearing the grass growing from underneath. That's another expression. <laughs> Okay, so, you have any questions, huh? No question? Okay? Okay. <laughs>